Hey guys, welcome to the Only Aki's YouTube channel. My name is Ben and today we are going to be running through all the summer signings that Brian Rice has picked up for Hamilton so far. Now the usual script for an Aki's transfer window is to buy young and to buy cheap. That has never been more present than the last summer transfer window bringing in people like Aaron Smith, Sam Kelly, Alex Penny, all of which made no impact to the team and were soon released. There's actually a brilliant article written by the Scotsman, which I'll leave in the description below, which rates all of Martin Canning's 62 transfer signings. Now go through that list and try and see what ones actually made an impact to the team. It's really not much. However, Brian Rice and Alan Maitland, the chairman, seem to have reworked this system and are buying good quality players and early on in the window. What I'm going to do is run through all the summer signings so far and we'll talk about what they can do for the team. The first time we're sending was Marcus Fortoff. Uh, apologies if I get that pronunciation wrong, but it's Norwegian. Marcus is the son of Jan Age, the former international Norwegian striker. He's a centre back, he's 6 foot 2 and 25 years old. Marcus started in the third tier of Norwegian football before transferring over to America and doing his football scholarship over there. I've seen a few clips of him playing in America and it looks like he's pretty good for his feet. He's a big guy, he's strong. Something Aki's have missed in the last few years is a player who can grab the game by the scruff of his neck and take control. And that's that's something that Marcus seems to be willing to do. He said in his Aki's TV interview that he's willing to lead the game. That's what he likes to do. He wants to be the leader in that back line. And to be honest, Aki's need it. Next up was the return of Aki's favourite, Brian Easton. Easton came through the Hamilton Aki's ranks before transferring down to Burnley. Down there, he helped them get promoted to the Premier League. Didn't play too much. He then returned back to Scotland with Dundee before going to St Johnson. And he's been there for the last few years. Brian has been played with injuries through his career, so it's a little bit of a hit or miss. His first game back for quite a few months was actually the last game of the season there. Uh, Aki's at home to St Johnson where we won 2-0 and confirmed our safety for the next year in the Premier League. That was his first game back for a few months. I think if Brian can stay fit, that's a great signing. He's an experienced defender. He's already loved the, by the Aki's fans. He knows the club inside and out. He came through the youth ranks. He's got experience in the Premier League, the Championship, uh, the Scottish Premiership, all the Cups, the FA Cup as well. This man has experience that can really benefit Aki's. If he's wanting to go on and coach, it's also a great opportunity to bring some of the youth up. Hopefully he can also help improve Scott McMahon who's in that position the now. But I feel that if Brian Rice is sticking with his five at the back, the three central defenders and the two wing backs, I reckon we'll see Brian Neeson as a left-sided centre back just inside of Scott McMahon. Uh, that's what he was doing with Ziggy Gordon, just as a right centre back, just inside Adam McGowan, rather than playing him uh, as the wing back. But I reckon we'll see him as the left sided centre back rather than the left wing back. Brian Rice obviously seen some problems with her defence and the next summer signing was Kieran McKenna down from Falkirk. Being only 21 years old, he fits the profile of being an Aki signing perfectly. He's young, it's someone we can mould into our own image and Brian Rice obviously sees some quality in him. Now Falkirk obviously have had a disaster this last two years and didn't perform very well last year. I believe they got relegated actually as well, back to back relegations. And all the Falkirk fans when we announced that Kieran McKenna was getting signed have said he was probably the best of a bad bunch. That's not necessarily saying he's a bad player, it's more he just had a bad season. But when a team's getting relegated and losing pretty much every week, your defence is going to look bad. But they were saying that out of the all, he was probably the one who could hold his head up the highest. Kieran started at the Celtic Academy before moving over to Duke University for three years, in which he also played with Marcus. He joined Falkirk at the start of last season, making 17 appearances in League One. Now I can't say that I see him being a starter for Aki's. I believe we'll start off with uh, Marcus, Gogic and Easton as the three centre halves. But with Gogic moving into the midfield quite a lot at the end of last season, I reckon we'll see Ken at McKenna jump in and out, but I don't see him as a starter. But hopefully under the coaching of Brian Rice, and you obviously see some potential in him, maybe in the next year or even halfway through this season, we could see him being an Aki starter. Aki's have actually done it. We have signed a creative midfielder. We have signed Blair Alston from St Johnston. Now Blair Alston's another one of those players that Brian Rice knows through his many contacts. He actually worked with Brian Rice at Falkirk a few years ago. He made 167 appearances for Falkirk, so Brian Rice will know him pretty well. Now something I've noticed actually through the summer signings is that a lot of the signings have came and they've said this specifically because of Brian Rice. Now most of them have been through contacts Brian Rice has and that's something Aki's haven't had for the last few years. Obviously being under Martin Cannon who jumped straight from being a player at Aki's, a player manager to being the full time manager, they didn't really have time to make contacts out there. But Brian Rice has been in the game for a long time, obviously playing at Nottingham Forest, managing at Hibs, managing at Falkirk, the man has connections all over the place and quite a lot of the summer signings I've found have came because of 
of that. I mean, he signed George Oakley last year. It was his only signing that he managed to make. Again, he came because he worked with him at Inverness and he was going to sign him at St Mirren. Blade Alston, he knows from Falkirk and we'll go into more later on. And that's a breath of fresh air for Aki's fans to hear players saying, I'm coming because of the manager. The Blade Alston has also suffered from his fair amount of injury problems, but when fit, the man is a great player. I feel that he can add plenty to our midfield with us really struggling for that creative role. He can play in the central, he can also play out wide in the right. So if need be, we can play him as a winger, but I believe we'll see him more central along with Daz, Martin and one of our new signings, Will Collar. Blaine Olsen also has plenty of experience. He's playing in obviously the Scottish Premiership, the Championship, he's also played in the League Cup and scored an absolute screamer of a goal against Ackies in the Ramsden Cup final in 2012 when he was at Falkirk. Hopefully we can see a few more of those crackers next season at Aki's. Our second last summer signing so far of the window is Owain Fawn Williams. Fawn Williams spent last year on loan from Inverness to Indy 11 over in the MLS, but it was the second division of the MLS, so it was like playing championship football. And he made 34 appearances while there, so pretty much he was their first choice keeper. He's made a total of over 350 career performances, so like I said, he will be the most experienced player we've got in the team. I think one of the most appealing things we can take from him being a signing is not only does he bring cover to Fulton, now it's only Fawn Williams and Fulton we've got there, but he'll also hopefully improve Fulton and push him onto that next level because he's still young. And also the fact that he's a Welsh international. Now he's only been capped once and that was a substitute appearance for Wayne Hennessy in the 75th minute. However, he does still have aspirations of being called back up. He's been very open to the fact he still wants to play for Wales. Even though he's over 30 years old, he doesn't want to give up on that dream for playing for his country. And I think if we've got a player who comes here and says that I am here to prove that I'm good enough to play for my country, then that shows they still have amazing aspirations and it's something that Aki should give him a chance with. I do believe that we will see Fulton as our number one. Brian Rice seems to favour him, but any mistakes from him, we know Fawn Williams is just on the bench and ready to come on whenever we need him. A final summer signing over the window is Will Collar, announced by Brian Rice himself during, inter during an interview with Aki's TV. He's a 22-year-old midfielder signed from Brighton and Hove Albion. He's only ever made one first-team appearance for Brighton and that was against Southampton in a loss in the cup run. However, he's been a regular starter for the under-21s team in the Premier League 2, which is like the under-23s Premier League. Brian Rice said he found him through his connections down at Brighton. He's worth a chance, apparently, and that's something that Aki's are willing to do for young players, give them a chance to perform at the highest level. Now, hopefully, he'll add quite a lot to our midfield. Maybe is he a replacement for Daz, perhaps, who's maybe in his last year? I hope not, but... I see him maybe this year as Daz being a more sporadic player and maybe people like Will Collar or Scott Martin getting a chance in that role to see if they're a suitable replacement. It's reported to be signed him on a two year deal so even if this year's just a kind of bleeding in period and then if Daz does retire maybe next year we'll see him as a full time replacement. Hopefully we give him a chance and he's not just a player we've signed from the Premier League 2 again who's not going to get a chance to perform. Hopefully we actually give him his chance and he can prove us all right. Now that's the last of our summer signings, but there have been a few contract extensions. The biggest one for me being the re-signing of Mikel Miller. We signed Mikel Miller in 2018 and he's gone on to be our top goal scorer in the league last year. He's a tricky player with a lot of pace and a lot of skill and it was somebody we thought he was off in the summer. He was gone. There was reported bids from people like Wrexham down in England and I thought, well that's him gone then, he's going to move back down. He's came up, made a name for himself, he'd now go and play in League One or the Championship or whatever it is they wanted him. However, no bids came in, there was no reports whatsoever, he was at all the games, he had an injury at the last season so he didn't play, but he was at all the games, he was on the pitch for the celebrations of staying up, he came in for the training and next thing we knew, he signed a contract extension. Which is a great signing for us, it's only another year, so I reckon maybe next year if a bid comes in he'll be gone, but hopefully he'll stay at the club for the next few years. The next contract extension and the one that Aki's fans are probably the happiest about is the return of the big man, Steve Davies. He signed from us on an initial six month loan deal, however we have signed him again on another year contract extension. He only scored two goals while he's here, however one of them being in the game against St Johnston in the last game of the season to help us stay up. We all know he's a big guy, he can hold the ball up top and he seems to have a pretty decent touch on him. Now when he first signed, I along with many other Aki's fans were a bit pessimistic of him. We seen him as a big guy, he had plenty of experience but we thought why are we signing this man? We need someone young and exciting who can really push his own. However, Steve Davies has proved us all wrong. He got a few assists this season setting up Daz's wonder goal against Dundee at home to draw his one each and Brian Rice's, I think it was his first home game. I'm really happy to see Steve Davies stay. He's a good character around the squad, he's an experienced guy and to be honest I reckon if we could start him up top with George Oakley or if we do bring any other players in he could be a pretty decent signing for us.
We also saw three other players get contract extensions, Sean Want, Ross Cunningham and Ronan Hughes, however I don't see any of them really being first team starters. Sean Want I reckon will be in and out of the team and I reckon Ross Cunningham and Ronan Hughes might get their chance in the Brentford Cup games but I doubt they'll even be in touch during the league. I do reckon we'll make a few more summer signings and maybe a few closer to the actual league games, however right now I'm pretty happy with what we've done so far. Good business, experienced players and some young ones to help push us forward. And I think along with everyone else, I am praying for the return of number 22, Tony Andrew. Thank you very much for joining me on the Only Accus YouTube channel. Be sure to go ahead and hit subscribe down below so you don't miss any of our videos. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, all linked down below so you never miss our daily content. Got a question for you to leave in the comments as well. Who do you think has been our best summer signing? Who will make the biggest impact in the league? Who do you think that is? Go ahead and leave it in the comments section down below. And also comment who do you want to see us signing? Is there, is there any players out there that have caught you and I think they fit in at Hamilton? Let me know down below. And don't forget to share the video with all your Aki's friends. Let's get as much content going as we can. Again, thank you for joining me and hope to see you again soon.